first chapter, and let's start there, if you would. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many love the Lord? Amen. Praise be to God. How many thank the Lord for Brother Jimmy? I know I do. Hallelujah. Serving as his pastor in Fort Worth that came all this way to continue in his role as my armor bearer. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Did he almost fall? What I miss, brother? You look, off, you look awfully embarrassed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let me explain to you what's going on. Hallelujah. Uh, for those who've been around my ministry very long, you, you know that I, I teach uh, a whole lot on the Mosaic Tabernacle. There are more scriptures on the Mosaic Tabernacle in your Bible than any other subject, period, in your whole Bible other than Jesus. Hallelujah. And the reason being is because, as everyone knows, Hallelujah's been around, and I hope everybody can see this okay. If not, we can move it around or something. Hallelujah. In Exodus, the 25th chapter. In Exodus, the 25th chapter, God began up here in the west, and He told Moses, to build an ark of the covenant. And then he told him to cover it with the mercy seat which had the angel's wings. Then he said to come over here to the north and put a table of showbread. And on that table of showbread put two or, or uh, six stacks or six loaves of bread and two stacks of six. Hallelujah. And all of this has purpose. And he said come over here to the south and put a candlestick, which that's not a very good rendition. I'm not an artist. Hallelujah. But you've probably seen pictures of it. Now, most people see them as menorahs sitting around here. But that's not the way this was. This candlestick was over six foot tall. It was literally full, like a man, alive. And it had the one vine and the six branches. Hallelujah. Jesus being the vine and we the branches made the seven lights. Hallelujah. Of Revelation. Glory to God. Then he said, come right here and put an altar of incense that was perfectly square, covered in gold with four horns. Then he said, come right here and put the laver, which is round, and the laver had two parts. It had an upper part and a lower part. And the priest would wash his hands in the upper part and his feet in the lower part before he came into the presence of the Lord, which is a picture of the washing of yourself in the name of Jesus through the washing of the waters of the Word. Then right here, hallelujah, he put the brazen altar, which is the largest piece of furniture in it. And when you stood here, you couldn't see any of this until you came past that. Come on. Anybody get that? See, a lot of people are standing in salvation, and that's all they're seeing is their salvation. They're not seeing the rest of what God has for them. Glory to God. This, this piece of furniture was over eight feet high by eight feet square, perfect or cubed. That's why they had to literally have a ramp and, and, and maybe your homework tonight should be, why would they have to have a ramp and stairs were not allowed? Anybody know why they didn't know stairs? Okay, go look it up. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. That's me, man. Hallelujah. But I'm not above tricks to get you to be, to be here. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. But anyway, interestingly enough, all of this is a picture of Jesus. Okay? Glory to God. And it was divided into three compartments. Now, we know that this veil has been taken away now. Hallelujah. But all of this was hidden. No, none of this was allowed to be seen. Everybody could come in here. But no one was allowed in here but the priest. And no one here but the high priest once a year. Glory to God. And this is a picture of the hidden, the mysteries, the things that we grow into in the Lord. Are you with me? But it all starts right here. The first thing they did was the blood, which is a picture of our salvation. And see, a lot of people get the blood of Jesus and they think, well, I've got it all. Look at all of what's left. The blood is not the end, it's the beginning. Glory to God, okay? Now, somebody tell me, after they took that animal and they sliced his throat and they cut him in pieces and they tied him. Now, first of all, why would you want to tie a dead animal that's been cut in pieces to an altar? If he's dead, he's no fear. They didn't tie it till after he was dead. And why would they tie it when he was dead? You'd think they'd tie it a lot. Okay? But what, what happened after they, 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 they uh, put the blood on the horns of the altar? 
Somebody tell me. I got y'all scared already, don't you? <laughs> y'all scared to answer already, looking at me like, you know, like you need some new programming or something. Okay? How about some fire? Fire fell from heaven, right? Right. It was, it was a Holy Ghost fire. That's right. Okay? And that would be, so, and that fire fell from heaven, and that's a picture of our Holy Ghost experience. You know? Because God not only wants you to be saved by the blood, but He gave you the gift of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's right. Amen. You know? So, now here's the thing. You know why they had to tie that animal down? Because the fire would fall with such a force it knocked it off the altar. Come on. Glory to God. That's why we had to bind the altar, bind the sacrifice to the altar that David was talking about. How many people do you know, they'll get a hold of the horns of the altar, they'll hold on and they'll hold on.